This just in, the much anticipated Fuji X-H2S is going to cost more than the Fuji X-H2. Details coming up, but first I encourage you to subscribe and choose all notifications so you're kept informed on the latest camera gear, news and rumors. Over the last couple of weeks, Patrick at Fuji Rumors has reported that the Fuji X-H2 is going to cost somewhere under $2,500, which has led many to believe, including myself, that the Fujifilm X-H2S, a 26 megapixel camera versus the 40 megapixel camera in the X-H2, well, it's going to cost less than, well, the Fuji X-H2. Well, not so fast. According to sources, the price of the 40 megapixel X-H2 has been confirmed to be less than $2,500. It can be said that the 26 megapixel X-H2S is 100% certain to be more expensive than the X-H2. Okay, I wasn't really expecting this. Normally how things go is when we're told about a camera that's capable of doing 8K video, it's right up there in the top shelf. It costs more than a camera that can do 6K video or 4K video or even 1080 or 2K video. It doesn't usually cost less. And the Fujifilm X-H2 is going to cost under $2,500, according to what's been reported by Patrick at Fuji Rumors. So I'm a little bit perplexed here. And even if you look at it the other way around in terms of stills, a larger sensor size normally costs more than a camera with a smaller sensor size. Patrick went on to say that continuous shooting speed is more expensive than high resolution. Remember that the X-H2S has a stacked sensor, but the X-H2S does not. And that's the other piece of the pie that we just got over the last couple of days. And I missed reporting this just a couple of days ago because of the brouhaha over the Canon R7 and R10. And of course, then I had to get out a review video of the Wheel 8 Ninja 20. So looking at all this together, it's very interesting that the Fujifilm X-H2S is going to have a BSI stack sensor and that the X-H2 isn't going to have a stack sensor, but will it have a BSI sensor? That, well, we don't really know yet. And again, these are rumors. We're going to know in a few days. It's currently what? The 27th. So we have the Fujifilm X Summit on May the 31st. Although we're not going to get details about the X-H2. This is all about the X-H2S and a bunch of lenses. But it's very, very interesting to know that the X-H2S is going to cost more. That kind of sets things up a little bit. While the R7 and the R10 was coming out, we were looking at these as Canon's flagship. Well, not both of them are Canon's flagship. APS-C camera. The R7 was supposed to be the flagship APS-C camera on Canon's lineup. And after all the dust has settled, it looks like that the Canon EOS R7 is more of the Canon 90D in the best possible successor that we could have. That's going to cost around $100 to $200 more than the 90D did when it was released if accounted for inflation. The 7D Mark II, the successor to that, well, it doesn't really seem to have materialized. But when we look at the Fujifilm X-H2S, this seems to be punching well above what we would imagine a successor to the 7D Mark II to be. So let's take a look at the specifications again for the Fujifilm X-H2S. It's going to have a 26 megapixel backside illuminated stack sensor that's capable of shooting a staggering 40 frames per second. And that's a huge amount of data in transit. It's a huge amount of data that has to be stored on a camera system that's rumored to be having dual UHS-2 card slots. So let's unpack this 40 frames per second. We don't know anything about that. We don't know if it's lossless, raw. We don't know anything, but still 40 frames per second is absolutely staggering. And on the video side, 6K video at 24, 25 and 30 frames per second. Will it do 60 frames per second like the Canon EOS R3? We don't know, but still to be able to produce 6K video or 6K oversample 4K video is absolutely amazing. And of course, in 4K, it can do 24, 25, and 30, as well as 50 and 60 frames per second, plus 100 and 120 frames per second. So you've got slow motion, whether you shoot in 30 or even 60 frames per second. So quite powerful there. And one other thing too, uh, it's got a flippy screen, but that's not what I was trying to get to. It's got an overheat accessory. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, Fuji Rumors has reported that it's going to have some sort of cooling device that bolts onto the back of the camera with the LCD flipped out to help keep it cool for those long recording sessions. This has led many of us to speculate and wonder, well, what is the overheat going to be like on this camera? Does the accessory just allow us to shoot for insane periods of time, like north of two hours, up to six hours, or crazy amount of time like that? Or do we need that just to be able to get through a half an hour of recording of 6K video or 6K oversample 4K video? We don't know, but the good news here is regardless of what the overheating situation may be, 
Fujifilm has definitely got out in front and said, hey, look, you know what? In these situations, it's going to overheat. Um, however, we have this little accessory for you, and it's only going to cost you $199. I don't know the price of it, but if that's the way that conversation goes, then many of us might go, okay, yeah, sure, you know what? I don't shoot video, so no big deal. Um, I shoot mostly stills, the occasional video. I'm good. I don't need it. Or the conversation might go like this. Oh my God, I shoot video all the time. I don't want to have to worry about overheating. You know, at $200, no problem. I'll go ahead and get it. However, it could cost more. It could cost $499, $599. We just don't know. But I'm really curious to know what this is all about. I really, I'm looking forward to that conversation on May the 31st. The autofocus system has also received a huge update over previous cameras. And now it's pretty much able to track everything. Planes, trains, automobiles, bikes. The only thing missing is boats and, well, UFOs. And in terms of eye tracking, yep, it's got you covered with animals, humans, and birds. The accuracy, we don't know until we actually get to see this in our hands, until we see reviews of it. But the rumors are all pointing towards a much improved autofocus system that's aiming to put it right up there with Canon and Sony, as well as Nikon, for the accuracy and reliability of their autofocus system, which is absolutely incredible. I can't really speak to Nikon and Sony from first hand, but the Canon EOS R5 with a firmware update of 1.4 allows us to track vehicles, birds, humans, animals, pets. Uh, I've even locked onto some insects and it's done a really incredible job. It's just amazing where the autofocus system has come today. So that's really good to hear that the autofocus system has improved. And to kind of wrap all this up, we get dual UHS-2 card slots. I was really hoping to see a CF Express Type B card slot, especially knowing that this camera can shoot 40 frames per second on a 26 megapixel sensor. CF Express card moves an awful lot of data. The fastest one out today, the AV Pro Mark II by Angelbird, can transfer data at a staggering 1.48 gigabytes per second. Not bits, I'm talking gigabytes per second. That's right up there with MVME speeds, and you're looking at an MLC type situation here. So very, very fast, able to, and that's a minimum sustained write speed. The card can peak up to 1700, but it's that minimum sustained write speed that you always wanna focus on when it comes to your storage. And of course, the price. Now, we don't have a price on this. We do know, again, as reported by Canon Rumors, sorry, Canon Rumors, Fuji Rumors, that the Fujifilm X-H2 is gonna cost under $2,500. And I take that as code to mean, 24.99, 24.98, 24.88, you know, all the type of Costco price endings that you can imagine. So where does that put the Fujifilm X-H2S? Well, I don't think it's gonna be 100 or $200 more. I, I just wonder how high will it go? Will it go as high as 29.99, 28.00, 27.99? I really don't know. And this is where I'm really curious. What do you think the price of the Fujifilm X-H2S is going to be? And does this change your perception of this camera and maybe whether it's affordable enough for you. So let me know in the comment section down below because I'm really curious about this. I was super excited by the Fujifilm X-H2S. I thought, wow, a camera with all these capabilities that's gonna cost under the price of the X-H2, probably somewhere between $19.99 and $23.99. Well, now we can flip that price on its head and it's probably gonna cost somewhere between $27.99 and $29.99 or maybe even more, we just don't know. And of course, when is it gonna be announced? Well, we know it's gonna be announced on May the 31st here in 2022, but we don't know the time. We don't know the time yet. So as soon as I know that, I'll let you know. If you wanna stay up to date on the latest camera news and rumors, make sure you subscribe, but also choose all notifications because by choosing all notifications, as soon as I publish a video, you're gonna get notified. So that way you're up to date on the latest camera news and rumors. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.